Talking of free time, Mick and Trudy are now here with a lot of wonderful ideas. Ha! Oh. Today, we welcome the first free time band of the new series, Red Baron, who come from Newmarket in Suffolk. And Terra Hall Show 90 comes under the critical eye of the Freeview panel. Welcome to Free Time. Everyone here has a free time co contribution of one sort or another today, don't they? Yes, and they come from all over the place. Today's smart, so where do you come from? Birkenhead. Birkenhead in the Wirral? Yeah. And where do you come from, Stephen? Uh, Cumberland, near Glasgow. Cumberland, right. yeah, very lovely. Spot. And uh, Kerry? I'm going to Essex. Essex, so all over the place, and they're all here to tell us about fundraising for charity. And we've discovered there are some very imaginative ideas around for doing just that. For example, in Wales, Simon, Janine, David and Paul wanted to raise some money for a local historical house, Plas Mauer, which has its very own ghost. Plas Mauer is an Elizabethan house in the middle of Conway, which is in North Wales. It was built in 1574 by Elizabethan adventurer Robert Wynne. The house is built in the shape of an E, which most Elizabethan houses were built in. We decided to raise money for Plasma Aur. One of the ideas was to make brass rubbings by putting paper over brasses and rubbing them over with different coloured pastels. But we decided in the end not to because there were other things which we could do to raise money. We decided to raise money by going into the stocks being sponsored, but they put me in the stocks and threw tomatoes at me, but we scrapped that idea, didn't like that. Yeah, kind of pretend we didn't throw them, but sort of <laughs> throw them. <laughs> do you want this all pack? <laughs> We decided to learn about the ghost and what it felt like. And we set off into the haunted room and I told the story to the three boys. Do you want to hear the story of the haunted room? Yeah. yeah. This is how it goes. One dark afternoon, the lady of the house climbed to the top of the lookout tower to see if there was any sign of her husband coming home from the wars. She had a small child with her and she was heavily pregnant and the climb to the top of the tower tied her more than she had realised. When she grew weary, she started downstairs but it was almost dark and she tripped and fell, dragging her child with her. On hearing the noise, the housekeeper rushed out and put her mistress and child to bed here in the lantern room, so called because the light shone from it to light up the courtyard below. She sent a manservant for the doctor he came back, not with the usual doctor, but with his deputy, Dr. Dick. The housekeeper was frightened when Dr. Dick said nothing could be done, as both the lady of the house and the child were dying. She knew that the Lord and Master was expected home, and that he would be very angry, so she locked the doctor in the room. When the Master returned, Dr. Dick was nowhere to be seen, and the woman and the child were both dead. He walked round and round the room, looking for the doctor, until he dropped down dead from a broken heart. The only escape for Dr. Dick was up the wide chimney, so he probably suffocated. The master of the house still walks the lantern room, looking for him, and until Dr. Dick's bones are found and buried in the churchyard, the ghost will never rest. I'm not going to get some sleep tonight. I'm not turning on that camera. 
Well, after we'd heard the story, we settled down for the night. Later on, about half past one, I could have sworn I saw a shadow, but I didn't want to make the others think I was scared, so I didn't say anything, I just kept quiet. We raised a considerable amount of money because everybody was very interested and thought it was a very unusual and good idea. Great way of spending our free time. Yes, indeed it is. A great idea for your free time, isn't it, that? And a very brave one as well. What is that? Can you see that? Oh, my God. <laughs> How can we get rid of that? Can anyone get rid of it? Shoo, shoo, shoo. Go, go away. away. Go away. Sorry about that. It was our pet ghost. Very good. I'm glad you arrived in the nick of time. Adam and Craig is your pet ghost. And what is all this about um, ghosts and horrible things that goes on? We're from the Wirral, and a couple of months ago we had this thing at Horror Play Day. Yeah. And what we did, we put a mask around someone, blindfolded them, and we took them into this dark tent, and then we told them a horrible story. And we said that you just tripped over the giant and fallen into his liver. Oh, and you put them in all that spaghetti. Yeah. Push around it. What else happened on this horror play day? Well, as you go on, you hear lots of other horrible things. And one of them was where you came in encounter of devil's eyes. And you were told that they were devil's eyes and they just threw them into your hands. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and you were blindfolded. It must have felt terrible. So how could you um, raise money for a good cause with your idea? Well, there were lots of cues outside. And I think... <laughs> that if you charge 10 pence, you'd raise lots of money. And right. If you and uh, if you charge the pound, you'd be able to get out again. Yeah, so in the film, people were paid to be frightened, and you make people pay to be frightened, don't you? Yeah. All right, Adam and Craig, nice <laughs> idea, that one. Very gruesome, but a less gruesome hobby, and if your green fingered would like to try gardening, you could try a sponsored sunflower grow, like Caroline, Sarah, Gemma, Toby and Kerry did. How did you organise it, Kerry? Well, we were all given five sunflower seeds each and we could plant them where we liked and give them as much um, attention as possible. Talk to them and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were sponsored about one or two p centimetre. And they were measured in the middle of September and the tallest of your five sunflowers that grew was the ones that you got sponsored by. Great. And how tall did they grow? How tall was yours, Gemma? Two and a half metres. That's pretty big, isn't it? So, how much did you raise? Um, you raised about ten pounds. So, altogether, how much did you raise? Fifty, sixty pounds. Did you do anything with the seeds, or? Well, yeah. you can use them to feed your gerbils and hamsters and mice like that. Or yes. you could sell them. Of course, you could sell them in packets. I think it's a yeah. great idea. Great way to watch your money grow. <laughs> This splendid green jelly man, he really is made of jelly, was made by Stephen and Kerry and friends at the Cumbernauld Theatre Play Scheme to raise money. Now, how did you go about making him, Stephen? Well, first you need a plaster of Paris mould. So we used one of our play readers yes. and we covered them with plaster of Paris. And when it set, we took it off. But it got all stuck in his hair. Mm. And it was so, when we took it off, it was so sore. Uh, he screamed and it just broke. Oh, yeah. So we made another one and we got a tailor's dummy and we covered it with plaster of Paris. And when it was set, we took the dummy out and we filled it with jelly. And there he is. All right, how are you going to use it to make money? Well, we're charging people five pence to try and guess how much packets of jelly went into making them. Are you going to tell me how many packets you used? No, it's a secret. <laughs> no, I didn't think you were going to tell me. Anyway, it's a lovely idea. Thanks very much. And thanks, everyone, for some excellent fundraising ideas for charity. If you at home know some unusual, imaginative and effective ways of doing the same, please write and tell us and we'll feature some more of those ideas in the new year. Right, now, has anyone has any idea at all what Rangoli is? Helicopter? No. Monkey? No. Spaghetti? No. It's a good one. Nice. No, no ideas at all. No, we didn't know either. So free time has been to Leicester to find out. And Pretty and her friends showed us this very attractive doorstep painting, which they do for the Hindu festival of Diwali, which takes place every October. Rangoli is the name of the patterns we're drawing. All the designs we're going to use are traditional. First, we've got a yellow paper, <clears throat> and we stuck it on the floor, and then we look on the paper, and we, our square is nine by nine, 
So we count out nine on each side, and then with some salt, um, we pinch some, we, where the holes are, we put some salt in each hole, and then carefully take up the paper. And then by looking on the picture, we join the lines up from one dot to the other, wherever it is on the picture. In India, they use oil paints. Here, I've decided to use some dry rice, which is coloured. All um, it's got yellow, purple, red, blue, and green. The colour of the rice, we mix in powder paints with water to dye them. And it's not um, traditional. It's just um, a good idea of using it. The powder paint is mixed with salt to sprinkle more easily. use black because it's a bad luck colour and we don't use paint brushes because we use fingers which is traditional. The reason we have um, Rangoli is when Rama came back to his kingdom after 14 years in the wild forest is that um, people did um, Rangoli on the doorsteps to welcome him so as he walked through Ayodha that was his kingdom he was welcomed with um, Rangoli. There we are. Rangoli is a very pretty Indian art. Our panellists on Freeview are Simon and Sandra, and they're here to talk about terror hawks, which is shown in most ITV regions on Sunday. So, Simon, do you watch um, almost every episode of Terror Hawks? When I get round to it, yes. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean when you get round to it? How often is that? Well, if I'm not out or anything, I watch it, you know. What about you, Sandra? Yeah, I watch it a lot as well. And who do you watch it with? Everybody? I watch it yeah, <coughs> with my family and my brother doesn't like it. Your brother doesn't like it? How old is he? He's 16. But your parents do? And I think it's funny. Yeah, and the young people do as well. Uh, they, these two have seen last Sunday's programme. So let's have a look at a bit of it ourselves. In this sequence, the Terror Hawks defend the world against the evil plans of Queen Zelda and a huge cannon. Can you take it out, Hawkeye? If I can hit the lead cue at exactly the right moment, maybe. <laughs> Terrorhawks triumph over Queen Zelda again. Um, what, how do they compare with Joe 90 and Thunderbirds, Simon, do you think? Because they, they follow those series. The special effects are much better. And are, are they better? Is it a better series as such? Well, it is, but the story doesn't change every week. It's the same. Yes. What about you? What do you think of uh, Terrorhawks, really? Yeah, I agree, but I think there should be different baddies in it. Not the same every week. A bit repetitive? Yeah, but I like Queen Zelda, though. Oh, good, you do like her. Why? Because I like her makeup and you know, her face. What are the things that you particularly like about the series? I, I like the beginning with the um, graphics game, and, but most of all, I like the special effects. They're very good, aren't yeah. they? And we've actually been to see how they're done. We went to Bray Studios to watch the special effects men filming an explosion. That's how they do it. And that was the explosion from the last episode, wasn't it? Yes. Let's give it a, a thumbs up rating. Out of 
five thumbs up, what would you rate it, Simon? Three. Three for Terrell. That's pretty good. What about you, Sandra? I'll give it four. Even better. All right. Thanks very much, both of you. Our panel really like Terror Hawks, and if you haven't caught up with it yet, there are another 15 episodes to come in this series on ITV, and you can see it all over the country. Check the TV Times when it's on in your area. Our free time band this week are called Red Baron, and they come from Newmarket in Suffolk, and with me is Simon, the lead singer. Simon, how long have you all been together? About 18 months. Where did you all meet up? At the middle school. Where did you all at school together? Yeah. Where did you all start writing, and who does the writing? Well, all of we all sort of put it all together, all collectively yeah. done. Yeah. And um, what are you going to sing for us today? It's called Calendar Girls. Calendar Girls. Mm. Right, now I have a calendar. Was this the calendar that inspired you? No, no. no. I don't think it was <laughs> somehow. You go up on the stage. It is. Up you go. Mm. And um, I'll introduce you. So, clutching the calendar, here are Red Baron from Newmarket in Suffolk. And they're singing their own composition. And it's called Calendar Girls. Sound. And if there are any buddy musicians, 15 and under, please let us have your tapes and perhaps you can be on the show. Indeed. That's the end of free time. Until next week, we'll be going karting then. See you. Bye. <laughs>